meeting. What is the art of business or the business of art? How can artsy folks help business types and business types help artsy folks? In this series, Karen Light, artist, illustrator, creative coach, and Mike Klaus, businessman and business coach, will take turns asking each other questions that explore this. Each time, one will coach the other on a journey to creative success and successful creativity. Thanks so much for listening. And I'm really excited about this episode because I get to be coached now Yay. by the amazing Karen Light <laughs> um, around something that um, actually brought us together in, in connection. Um, me seeking out Karen's support in, in creativity, in understanding more about what it is, uh, how to develop my creativity and, and leverage it for the work that I do in, in working with uh, entrepreneurs and executive leaders. So excited to talk today, excited Yay, to, uh, to, to get some more guidance and support in this area. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And, you know, one of the first things that comes to mind as we start this conversation is to maybe revisit um, that connection that you and I made. And it was through one of your doodle workshops. And, and um, even before that, I think we met through, uh, was it the gratitude encounter? Oh, yeah, um, I think that's what I it think was. It was through the gratitude right. encounter, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, came to one of your doodle workshops and just really enjoyed the work we did there. And my whole intent, and I'll start with I'll start with the statement I made originally with you is I started out on my own as a coach, um, did it because I knew it's the only way to keep doing the work I love, not necessarily because I wanted to have my own business, but because it's the only way I knew to keep doing the work I love and do it in the way I felt I was made to do it. Mm. A big part of that in getting out there and letting people know you're here and what you do is putting yourself out in front of people. Mm -hmm. And content creation is not a natural thing for me. Um, so let's go back. I'm going to ask this question. You've answered it for me for once, but I think it'd be real helpful for those that um, I'm blessed to support mm -hmm. in. I don't see myself as a creative and I need to be creative. Mm. Is there hope for me? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it is an inherent belief of mine that we are inherently creative. So if you are human, you are creative. Um, and people tend to, you know, put creatives in a category of artists. And um, that's, you know, we could talk about everybody being an artist too, but, you know, just in the sense of being a formal artist is one way to be creative. Mm -hmm. It is not all of creativity. So, um, you know, people, you are creating things all day long. We're creating this this little podcast right now, you know, we're creating this conversation. Um, you've created a lovely home. You've created a family. You've created the business that you have so far, right? Like you've created your life so far. And the thing is, is that we are always creating. And when we can do that with a lot more intention and confidence, then we start creating and crafting a life that makes us more excited and more fulfilled. And that's more joyful for us. Um, and really hone in on that creativity. So, yeah, I, I think that it's not about whether or not you have it. It's whether or not you are blocking it and how much you're allowing it um, to flow through you. Again, you can't help but be creative on many levels. But if you start really, you know, focusing on those blocks and why you think you aren't creative, then more and more will flow out. And it's just waiting for you to be like, OK, <laughs> I'm going to step aside now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So much in that, so much in that to, to unpack, I think. Um, and we, we don't have time for all of it, right? But, <laughs> but one of the things you said there, it's there, right? It's inherent, it's there. Mm -hmm. And I love it because one of the things I do in the work I, I get to do with other people is help them realize their own brilliance, their own worth, their own value, who they are is inherent, right? And mm -hmm. use the same terminology. The only difference is, is in people is how much it's blocked or unblocked right exactly. our inherent yeah. our, our our value our worth none of that changes we just learn how to unblock it more and more and express it more and more so exactly. so much resonance with what you share around creativity mm -hmm. um just would love to hear from you as you work with um so much in the creative space and with those that are 
probably in the creative space that we more, that are more, I don't want to use the word stereotypical, but when we say the word creative mm -hmm. are the first kind of people that come to mind, right? The artists mm -hmm. and, and sculptors and writers and so forth. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things have you seen as being some of the, the more common blocks or blockages um, to that creativity with the people you've supported? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I'm going to turn it around on you in a minute. But um, a really common theme that I see is people being worried that they they aren't uniquely creative. Mm -hmm. Like they won't find their own unique voice. Um, like they could make things, but is it going to be really uh, special? And is it going to um, grab people's attention and like, oh, this is something a little different, you know, this mm -hmm. is something that only this person could do. Um, and that will block a lot of creativity if we're so worried about how it's going to be perceived on the other end. And we're so focused on it has to be different than everything mm -hmm. else. You know, there's a lot of people in the world making a lot of things that that like is very challenging. Mm -hmm. When you think, oh, mine has to be something that nobody else is doing, you know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, on the flip side of that, I think that you are a unique person. So inherently, there will be some uniqueness that comes out, mm -hmm. but we borrow all the time, like we're inspired by each other. And we have to sometimes, I mean, the masters, right? Like you would, as an apprentice, you would go and paint exactly what the master did before you found your way through. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. I think a big step in creativity that people don't realize is, is use, be, finding someone or something that inspires you and just mimicking it, like learning about it. How do they do that? What are they doing? Let me try to do that. Yeah. And then naturally the next steps that start happening are like, oh, I would tweak it this way. Right. right? Like, oh, I would make it my own this way. And, um, but it doesn't just always come out from the get-go and that will stop a lot of people hmm. so yeah. you're saying so you and oh I, I got one more question and then you can turn it back around yeah, yeah. I'm, not I'm not trying to deter you <laughs> no, okay. um so from this side what you're saying is creativity doesn't necessarily have to be completely and totally original no no i wouldn't think of it that way um okay. i think that that really stops a lot of people Okay. They're like, oh, I can't come up with that brand new idea. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I'm not going to have the latest cutting edge idea. You know, no, you're not. Maybe you will down the road or maybe you're one of those lucky people that gets struck by lightning. But, um, <laughs> you know, I what we what we see is people coming up with a cutting edge idea. We don't see all the back end. We don't see the years of them trying things and failing, or we don't see them trying exactly what their inspirational hero has done and um, you know, seeing what that does for them. We don't see all the steps ahead of time. We just see their brand new idea and think, well, they're creative. I can't do something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes a lot oh, of time. That's, that's, uh, that's liberating. I mean, actually. so I'm an artist, right? Like I make stuff all the time. Um, I've been really doing a lot of client work lately and, um, I have been slowly returning to my own studio to make my own work. And it's a really frustrating process. Honestly, I don't know what's creative or new or unique about my thing at the moment, but I just trust that that's the process, right? Like I have mm -hmm. to just kind of like fumble. Mm -hmm. I have to fumble through a little bit, you know? Yeah, you just said something else there that really resonated with me again, being more leaning more towards the business end of things is you said trust the process. Mm. And, and, and I don't necessarily always think about a process mm. when it comes to creativity. Right. Yeah. So huh. a question okay. that I would think about for yourself, and maybe you could do this a little bit out loud. Okay. First of all, think of think of something that you did create that um, you feel good about whether okay. it could be something big or it could be something small like one one piece of writing you put out there like it could be yeah anything a, a meal you made you know yeah <laughs> it could yeah. be anything um one thing that comes to mind right off the bat is a a writing i did a long time ago mm -hmm. and it was with with my kids right as a dad i've got two boys you can this is right here, right mm -hmm. there. They're much younger in this picture than they are now. Um, but it's one of those moments of just realizing my imperfection mm -hmm. and my flaws as a parent. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And then being comforted, you know, from this disappointment with myself, mm -hmm. then being comforted by a memory of my dad making a mistake, getting upset with me, and then realizing later it wasn't me that mm -hmm. lost the wrench he <laughs> did because uh -huh. he found it where he put it. And instead of, instead of just saying, oh, there's my wrench, he took the time to come in, sat down next to me on the couch while I was watching my cartoons. Mm -hmm apologize, tell me what happened and ask me to forgive him. Mm. Um, wasn't like he blew up at me, right? He just was disappointed and he knew it impacted me that it is. So all of that to say with that story, it hit me later on in life. Again, I remembered this from, you know, nine, 10 years of age. And I just wrote a quick little piece around, you know, being a great leader. Being a great leader doesn't mean you're perfect, doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, my dad taught me one of the best leaders, uh, lessons in leadership in terms of owning your mistakes, right? doing your best to make it right. And I, I not only saw him do it with me, but I saw him do it time and time again. Um, yeah. As a teacher, as a coach, he owned his stuff and he did his best to make it right. And the writing, like after I got done writing it, mm -hmm. I was... I don't want to say impressed. I don't mean that, but I, I was really proud of it because I mm -hmm. felt like it communicated what I wanted to communicate very well. And it got some, it got some really great responses. Um, and I, yeah, so I'll perfect. stop there. No, that's perfect. So one, so something I want you to think about for a moment are what are the elements that led up to that success? Mm -hmm. Cause that was, that didn't just come out of anywhere. Like I could tell just by the story you told already there are elements. So maybe just mm -hmm. take a second and think about yeah. those pieces that came together for you. Yeah, good question. So it was a memory. So that's one thing that comes, you know, it's just a, a, an impactful memory. Mm -hmm. um, don't even have to make it say it, it, not even good or bad memory, right? But just a significant impactful memory it wasn't a big thing. It was really such a small thing. It was about um, something you experienced. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep significant memory experience. Sorry, I'm writing this stuff down. Yeah, no, it later. Yeah. This is so good. Um, reflection, right? Reflection and connection. So reflecting back on it and connecting it with current moments and events. Um, so, so I'm yeah. going to say reflection and connection. So yes, yeah, like uh, meaningful and relevant to your life even now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Relevance. I like that word. Reflection and connections to, uh, to relevant, mm -hmm. the relevant. Um, and something I don't do often, right, was something made me take pause in that moment to take time mm -hmm. and make that connection. So, so even a pause or making time. Mm -hmm. Yep, super important. Um, emotion, I mean, there was emotion tied to it emotion didn't drive it, but it helped process the experience. It kind of added to it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Elements. Maybe, um, can I suggest a few? Please, please. Um, one might have been that there was a purpose, like a clear purpose in writing it. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel in general about writing? Um, believe it or not, I kind of enjoy it. So you enjoy here's another, writing? I do. Um, and, and great question, coach. Um, I enjoy it and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So I sit down, like I have, I love notebooks. Mm -hmm. I love good pens and pencils, right? Yep. So those are just like the quirky things. And I sit down and I want to write. And I sat there staring at the page with my pen about three inches above the paper so many times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not sure where to start. Mm -hmm. And therein lies just another obstacle, another thing blocking, <laughs> I feel like. Yeah. Activity. Well, that's what we're getting at by looking at these elements. Like what, what this time made you write instead of just staring at the paper, you know? And I think an mm -hmm. element that definitely helps with that is enjoying the process that you're using to create is enjoying writing when you mm -hmm. can, when it comes to you, right? Yeah. So enjoying writing. Um, yeah, I think that sometimes um, 
you know, it might have been this lesson that you've thought about how many times in your life, mm -hmm. right? So you've thought about in a way that kind of allows you to practice it. Mm -hmm. Like you weren't actually starting from scratch. No, no, you're right. Because there were, um, there are plenty of times over my life where <laughs> I had to own my stuff and, and um, humble myself after, mm -hmm. you know, for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. um, so I had practiced it quite a bit. I just maybe had never really made the connection to that moment with my dad until mm -hmm. I was a dad, right? And there was that, that connection. So I'm wondering for you, since this, this one went really well, some of the questions that I'd be curious about is like, mm -hmm. do I always start my writing with a memory? Maybe if I start with a memory, um, I know, you know, there is that cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason, write what you know, right. um, you know, create what you know, right. And it's kind of goes back to what we were saying before, like you start with something, you know, but who knows where that will take you. You're going to have your own twist or that your own reason right. for that memory. You're going to have your own meaning in the memory um, where somebody, your dad might write that completely different. This <laughs> is how you write that, you know, mm -hmm. um, this is your point of view. This is your voice. This is your style. All of that's going to come out. Yeah. No, I so love that idea. I feel like this theme just kind of came right through here of like, just it really starting, starting with a memory start from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. We don't start, start with a memory. Scratch. Then that's an important part for me to, I'm going to write that down. Start with, I already had start with a memory. So I remember write, not from scratch. Yeah. So just to illustrate this point and, and to really drive home that this is a technique that artists use. Right. So when I was in college, you know, you're making art like 50 hours a week. You know, I was just in my studio constantly. You're in the groove. You have deadlines. There's no time to be like, I can't make anything. You just have to make things and you get in that groove. And then especially the last year, year and a half, you start creating a body of work for your final thesis, you know, and I created a huge body of work. I filled two galleries and um, I got out of college and you know, life is really different out of college. You don't have all the, I was a sculptor in college. You don't have all those tools, you know, like I didn't have, I had a job. I didn't have 50 hours a week. And so the art that I was making was no longer working for me. Mm -hmm. And I needed to make something I could make in my apartment. And I started with images from the sculptures that I made, collaging them onto wood, pulling some of the writings out of my sketchbooks that I wrote about them and going nuts. And it took me like three or four pieces before I was like, oh, I see where I'm going with this thing. And I don't have to use my old material anymore, mm -hmm. but it overlaps. Like yeah. just don't start from scratch. It's the worst place. <laughs> <laughs> no, and again, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say this sentence again. I already said it once. That's so liberating. Yeah, it really is. Um, I had um, someone I considered to be a mentor once. Um, and it's not their fault. It's not their fault, but I can see a reinforcing there. Um, I've always kind of felt like things have to be original, right? And, and there was a mentor that was always encouraging me, ah, that's been done, right? To go mm -hmm. to the original and be original, mm -hmm. um, which worried me because nothing's, nothing's new under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're so, but, but I don't, it's so well said. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very, um, very freeing. I mean, how many times, and I recommend just doing this, if you're stuck, um, you know, starting with a memory, sometimes when I'm stuck and I'm drawing, I literally write my name mm -hmm. and just start doodling around it. And, you know, we, we, it takes a second to uh, get into that space. You know, it takes a second. Mm -hmm. We can't go from, you know, I have this thing I want to write and this is what I'm going to use it for. And this very like linear, logical, practical thing, which you need, but it mm -hmm. takes a second to then let that go and move into like, Oh, let's just see what's in the chaos in here. And like, let's just play and let's just yeah. mess around, you know? Yeah. 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 So try this for a second. Okay. If you don't mind. You got you something bet. you're writing with, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I so I want you to, your your mic so we're going to use an m okay we're going to use an m i just want you to write an m okay just start by writing an m okay. 
And now write an M five different ways. We're doing a very quick version of this thing. Yes. <laughs> I'm improvising on the go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. I'm in a creative space, y'all. So what happens. <laughs> One of the many reasons I just appreciate our conversation so much. Um, one more. <laughs> That's challenging, laughing. more challenging than I thought. Uh huh. Get five different ways to write an M. Did you get them? Okay, I think so. Okay, okay, do one more. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first of all, you just illustrated that there is always a new idea. There is. And we just started with something you know very well in M. Mm -hmm. And now look at your M's and put two together, put two styles together. Mm. So now you just have a seventh and you have endless combinations already that you could play with within the six because you could put three together, you could put two together, you could put five of them together, you know, but we just mm -hmm. start with something, you know, and build and build. And there's always new ideas. There's always something to try. There's always combinations. That's the other thing to think about is sometimes your unique creativity is your unique way of putting things together. Mm hmm. You know, like a little mm -hmm. bit of this from this dude, a little bit of this from this woman, a little bit of this inspiration from this book I read, and it comes together in its own little concoction in your head because you are inspired by those six things where somebody mm -hmm. else might have a different combination of inspiration. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people get a kick out of all my expressions because whenever <laughs> a thought comes to mind, it always, it always comes out in my body somehow, but, but yeah, you just good. made me think of... There are um, two other coaches that I connect with on a regular basis and, and we get together just to talk, right? So mm -hmm. go on, uh, we get together just to talk where we're at, what we're doing, where we're stuck. Um, a lot of things you and I will talk about too, right? And mm -hmm. um, just what you mentioned there that we do that. We've all studied different things. We've all studied similar things and we call ourselves we call ourselves the gumbo guys, which we don't call <laughs> yeah. ourselves that anywhere than other in our group, <laughs> yes. right? But but we call it exactly. gumbo because we are, we're picking, we read a lot of different things and it's mm -hmm. it's great to see overlap and, and draw in from different places and see how things connect. And um, it's very inspirational because the three of us can see connections and interweavings and, and things way yeah. better, way deeper than just one of us could. Yeah. So, that's inspiring. I mean, that's another really great way um, to ignite your creativity, right? Mm -hmm. Is having conversations with other people. Yeah. You know, if you're feeling stuck, why are you just sitting in a room by yourself, like staring at a piece of paper? Mm -hmm. Like, go talk to somebody about your thought or an idea mm -hmm. or your stuckness, you know, go open a book, go, don't just sit there being stuck, you know, because you'll just spiral down. Mm -hmm. You'll just spiral deeper and deeper into judgment. You'll all those thoughts. I'm not creative. I can't do this. I don't have originality. I don't have a new idea that will just keep circling. And instead, when you find yourself there, you need to get up and go do something, you know, yeah. Yeah. like a walk usually does it for me, you know? Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Um, and that comes up in conversations around right, left, right brain, left brain for me, right? Yeah. I'm spending too much time in my left brain, right? Mm -hmm. Stewing. If I get up and move my body, mm -hmm. um, I can't help but take things in and let my let my right brain <laughs> um, catch up, right? And I always think my left brain must be like, oh, finally, I've been working too hard. <laughs> Give me a break, you know? Can right. I have lunch? You know, like <laughs> right. right, totally, yeah. mm -hmm. totally. And then you no, I overthink. Uh, so two <laughs> two big takeaways for me already. Yeah, yeah. Um, starting with a memory. Mm -hmm. starting with a memory um and then just uh so that you know the, the, it's the start that stops most people right so mm -hmm. if you just start with a memory and this this little m 
exercise, right? If, mm -hmm. if you really can't put pen to paper, what's one thing, you know, draw something, mm -hmm. <laughs> just draw something. And yeah. then, or, um, I remember one doodle you've had us do at a workshop that I really liked. And it was like, pick three things either on your desk or that you've seen, just pick three things, draw them all separately. And now, now draw them all, combine them somehow, work them yeah, all together. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, it was really great because it just got things moving. And then it was fun to see just the ideas that came as you just started moving with what was available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. It's like, how do I just get this momentum going? I don't mm -hmm. have to have, I have to go from zero to 60. I don't have to have scratch to the brilliant idea. Right. I just have to start the momentum and then trust in that process. And everybody's got a different process. So, you know, I recommend looking at that list of elements you made. And really mm -hmm. thinking about, okay, what are the pieces that led to the successful writing for me? How mm -hmm. do I create the time and the space for that? What is the purpose of what I'm doing? You know, um, mm -hmm. how is it relevant now? Why was it meaningful before? How do I want to share that? And I think you're a passionate, exuberant guy. If you, if you lock into those things, you're going to want to make mm -hmm. something, right? So true. And I'm glad this is recorded yes. because and all allow, it to be <laughs> <laughs> allow it to be imperfect. Allow it to be imperfect. Allow exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, I'm glad this is recorded because all those questions you just asked are uh, extremely valuable. Yeah. Um, extremely valuable. So I can go back and write them all down <laughs> uh, again as we listen to this. So so I guess the, the challenge question for everybody out there is, um, you know, how can you start with what you know? How can you start with what you know? Um, and you know, ideas around that could be starting with things you really enjoy or that have happened to you that are meaningful, um, that you like looking at. I mean, sometimes I just love a poem so much I have to rewrite it <laughs> and then it gives me ideas, you know, like um, just start with something that's really meaningful and enjoyable to you. Start with what you know. How yeah, you do that. I really like that. Awesome. Thank you so Good much. Work. You're welcome. Yes, Good work. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And again, this is a conversation we've had and there's just been so much neat um, further depth and even some some fresh some fresh ideas that, that came out of this conversation. So thank you, Karen. Awesome. I appreciate You're it. You're so welcome. Yeah. Good questions. Uh, let's remind let's remind uh, the people how they can connect um, yeah. with you and where they can find you. Sure. So you can find me at my website, studiolightillustration.com. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at Studio Light Illustration. And how about you, Mike? I can be found uh, on Instagram at Coach Klaus CDC. Um, the CDC stands for Clarity, Direction, and Courage. Um, and then you can also find me on my Facebook uh, public profile page, which is facebook.com life impact life purpose and impact life purpose and impact life I love purpose it. impact yeah. love it thanks so much everybody we'll see you soon thank Bye. you